What I would like to do now is talk uh, really briefly about a new development in, in web archiving. Uh, and, it, and it also signals a new um, historiographical approach. And, and that is to strive to save yourself, if you will, um, or um, uh, create collections of, of your own history. Um, of, yeah, sort of what was called um, at some point life logging or saving, saving uh, uh, yourself. Um, there are at least four or maybe five developments in this direction. I mean, the first one, which, which occurred some years ago, was asking, for example, uh, Twitter or other companies for your own data. So give me my data back, or give me a copy of my data. Um, and these uh, were requests that were about having companies comply uh, with certain uh, uh, privacy policies, having companies comply uh, with um, your users' rights. So it started there. Uh, but arguably, it, it was a much larger um, development, and there are f in the kind of the sort of the personalization of, of web archiving or of archiving media archiving. And I want to point out four recent developments. Uh, the, the first one is the rise of the, of the quantified self um, and the retention of your own data. Now, I don't know if any of you have used um, Google's new health or uh, Apple's new uh, health app. Um, it came with the most recent iOS and it had a some very, very, very soft launch. Um, but coupled to it are, is probably the most elaborate series of, um, of, of health parameters that can be saved yet, um, linked to a variety of, of apps and a variety of new, uh, new devices, um, not only fitness things, not only Nike Fuel Band and the rest, um, but also, uh, also other ones. So this is the first development. In, in some sense, the kind of personal turn or the autobiographical turn or the quote-unquote selfie turn. The second one uh, has a lot to do, um, or the, the other ones have a lot to do with the difficulties of archiving. So it is extremely difficult to archive um, smartphone use uh, or smartphone apps and, and, and the content population thereof. So there have been new developments. So, so um, teenagers are being kind of recorded, their use of smartphones, they're, they're being recorded. And then the, then the smartphone itself is then sort of donated to the, to the National Library. Uh, this is a case in Denmark as well as in, in Britain. Um, the other ones are um, brand new. Now this is... This is a project um, that was uh, done by Rizome. It's now on view. Um, that's the sort of digital arts group. It's now on view at the New Museum uh, in New York City. Um, and it is the first uh, project of its kind, at least as far as I know, uh, where um, uh, we've been able to archive um, a particular user of, of social media. And with a piece of software called WebEnact, um, which allows you to, in some sense, record um, a website. So instead of, instead of saving it, instead of downloading it, or instead of screenshotting it, and with this software, you record it. Um, and then you play it back. So, um, and the, the first piece that was done was, was a piece called uh, Amalia Ullman, Excellences and Perfections, and it is a remarkable piece of work. Uh, I, I really um, uh, recommend that you have a look at it, because it is at once, it is a feminist critique of, um, of, of <coughs> social media profiling. And um, 
the work looks like this. If you go to, if you just search for it, Amalia Ullman, Excellences and Perfections, um, there are three, um, let's say, impressions or recordings of her, of her website. And it's her website over a period of about four months uh, where she uh, sort of changes and where she profiles herself um, as, um, as, as, in some sense, becoming a sort of object of desire online. And, and as she um, augments her body, as she um, tries on new fashion, as she gains an audience, um, um, it's all for the purposes of social commentary, as she announces at the end, after four months, that uh, all of this was uh, an art performance. And it's ex extraordinarily well done. And, and I can recommend uh, you have a look at it. Now, this is the archived Instagram page, um, and it, it works extraordinarily, there's a screenshot of it, it works extraordinarily well. So you scroll, and, and, um, and it, it has sublime scrolling built in, you can, everything is, is still clickable, all of the, uh, all of the postings are, are there. And so it, it kind of reenacts, it's a web reenactment, is the, is the, is, is the terminology used, it reenacts uh, her use of that particular page. And indeed, it, it shows you how web archiving is, is you know, moving into this kind of selfie period or this autobiographical one. And so I want to just extremely briefly talk about, about um, two selfie um, archiving projects and analytical projects. Um, this one is from um, Time Magazine. And so as you know, uh, probably a lot of different media outlets have turned to what's called data-driven journalism. And it's something that hopefully upon conclusion of this class, uh, you could in fact do uh, in some ways. There are more skills involved, uh, but at least the data analytical part of it um, is being covered here, and then the journalism part you would have to pick up elsewhere. But nevertheless, um, the stories that are being told are very similar to the stories that, that we're developing in, in, the, in the weekly assignment. So this one is the question is, what are the selfiest uh, cities in the world? Uh, what they did is they um, took um, geotagged uh, Instagram uh, um, photos and, uh, and created a collection from, um, I think, well, no, they first, they, they, first, they first grabbed like the top, I don't know, 50,000 photos or something like this, then looked for the geotagged ones, and then and then uh, made a ranked list of, of cities according to most selfies. With, and, then the, and then they searched for the word selfie as well in, the, um, in, in their query. So the query was selfie, uh, and then they looked at geotagged uh, uh, photos and <coughs> made a ranked list. And, and it turns out um, that uh, in the Philippines, you have the most, the, the sort of the, the, the most selfies uh, per um, uh, hundred, followed by um, Los Angeles, uh, New York City, uh, et cetera. But a lot of the sort of Asian, it's sort of Asian cities on the one hand um, and North American ones on the, on the other. And they, they plotted it to a map. Now this is the second one and this is more academic. Um, this is the Selfie Cities Project by, uh, by <coughs> Lev Manovich and others. Um, and what you see here is um, a, a kind of cultural comparison of posing, or a comparison of posing cultures. So how do different cultures uh, pose? And like um, Lev Manovich's uh, cultural analytics approach, which we talked about previously, in this, again, um, we're looking at the formal properties of portraits. And by formal properties, um, you can see them here looking up or looking down, the tilt of the head, whether there are glasses, whether the mouth is open or closed, whether the eyes are open or closed, uh, and some idea of the sentiment, the mood, um, uh, etc. And then these are the selfies from a series of cities. And here's the data collection. Um, so it's New York, Sao Paulo, uh, Berlin, Bangkok, and, and Moscow. Um, and, 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 and the findings. So selfies are, are largely a sort of 20, 23 to 26 year old uh, 
undertaking. Uh, in Moscow, they tend to trend older. In Sao Paulo, they tend to trend younger. Um, and um, uh, in, in Moscow, the folks are slightly gloomier. Uh, in Sao Paulo, they're slightly happier. And, and these sort of gradations on the basis of these formal, formal qualities. So this is this is the this is the selfie or the autobiographical biograph. Uh, so it's, it's also a sort of urban studies uh, as well. But anyway, this is the the selfie uh, historiography and and the kinds of questions you can ask is that again very very different from the national or the event based uh, or the, or the or the grab them all. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is is talk about um, uh, how web archives have been used. And in particular, mention that, uh, I think it was in 2010, that web archive researchers for the first time call, uh, sort of announced that there was a crisis in web archive use. There are lots and lots of web archives out there, but um, they're, they're not being used. Um, and the question is, well, why? Or, um, or maybe how could they be used? Um, so first, what I want to, point out is um, one of the special collections. This is at the Library of Congress. Uh, this is the papal transition of 2005, uh, the collection of websites about um, um, the transition from Pope John Paul II uh, to his successor. And what's interesting is that if you type the Library of Congress's preferred um, citation style into uh, Google Scholar, um, which is archived in the Library of Congress web, web, you'll see that there are no returns. So this, this, was, uh, this was a couple of years ago. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's more or less the same. The archives are not being, uh, and it's the same right now, the archives are not being, uh, they're not being cited. I mean, they might be being used, but they're not being cited in, in scholarly. If you go to google.com and do the same, um, you get very, very few returns um, for the preferred citation of these web archives. Um, and then th those returns that you do get are self-citations, basically, for the Library of Congress uh, sites. So you see that sort of empirically and very quickly and sort of quick, quick, quick approach, um, you see that these, these, these web archives are, are under, underutilized. So, so what to do with them? Um, and, and, and in some ways, what, what we're doing is a contribution to um, web archive usage. Um, and so I want to talk about the kinds of contributions um, that we're making um, to, to web, uh, web archive usage. And the first one, well, or in fact, all of them, are about thinking in a sort of digital methods way, is thinking like, well, how can we repurpose um, these, um, the, th these, these indexing machines or for, for, uh, for, social, for social and cultural research? And the first um, um, example is to, is to rely on the Wayback Machine's um, single site history uh, historiography or its biographical, uh, inbuilt biographical historiography. Um, so we have created a means, and this is, this is the assignment this week, uh, or, or one of them, one of the possible ones, of capturing the history of a website uh, and uh, playing it back as a, as a screencast uh, documentary. Um, and so what I want to do now um, is uh, show you an example of that um, if you could close the curtains uh, and those as well, I'd appreciate it. I want to preface. I want to preface the uh, this this uh, short um, screencast documentary by showing you very very briefly how it was done. So so we went to the the Wayback Machine, um, typed in Google.com, and now. Not through this interface here, but through the API. This is the answer to your question uh, about how do you get the uniques. 
um, there's an option um, to get to grab the unique unique pages. So we grabbed only from Google.com. We grabbed only the um, the ones with an asterisk, and we um, we loaded them into a into into a video, uh, and then played them back in the style of uh, time lapse photography. So you're seeing very rapidly, but then uh, also gradually over time the changes to the front page of, of Google.com. Um, <clears throat> and then what we started to notice was um, that there were some subtle changes to the interface. And, and the subtle changes were of a particular kind. Uh, the, the, um, there are arguably two ways of navigating the web historically. One is via directories, human-made pages. The, the, the Dutch here will probably remember start pagina, uh, or um, uh, I don't know if you remember, we talked about the Yahoo directory. So the directory as uh, one of the dominant means of navigating the web versus search. And what you see in Google is, is over time the gradual decline of the directory and the rise of the of the, of the algorithm or the back end um, of, of, of search. And this is what the, what, the, um, what, the, what the screencast documentary shows. So I'm going to play it for you. Um, we're going to see if we can get this, uh, the sound.